So the next book is the Early Start Denver Model. Um, this book is more geared towards younger kids, so if you have older kids, I apologize, but depending on where your child is skill-wise, some of the things might still apply. Um, the reason why I suggest reading this book is because it combines developmental research with applied behavior analysis, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. Um, it's also an excellent resource for research. A lot of the things they recommend doing, I was already doing with my kids through trial and error, so it was great to read it and see, oh, wow, there is actually research on this. But I had never come across the research because I had only been looking at our journals on behavior analysis. I didn't know about the developmental research <coughs> to it. Um, they also have a lot of ideas for how to set up your sessions and structure the environment so that you can do a teaching session with your child. And great, great, great ideas for order of skills because it's developmental. They look at how do typically developing children learn these skills and what prerequisites do they have to have before they can do um, something more advanced. And then lastly, my favorite part is the social piece and just their explanation of why social behavior is so important to learning. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. They, they say in their book that they're different from the developmental approaches. And when I say developmental approaches, I mean Greenspan, um, Floor Time, DIR, DIR. Has anybody heard of those? Um, so the reason why they, they're different from those approaches is they focus on developing a relationship between the parent and the child, whereas even with some of the developmental approaches, they still have therapists come in, and it's more focused on the therapist developing a relationship. So they focus more on teaching the parent how to develop a relationship. They actually have research, um, really a lot of research, eight studies outcome based um, with their techniques, whereas with a lot of the other study or a lot of the other approaches don't have, they just have like anecdotal, this worked for my child. Um, it's well articulated. They actually have a manual. Um, well, the book is basically the manual. They have videos that you can watch. They have a training process that you can go through. Um, there's no setting requirement, so it doesn't have to be in the child's home. It can be done in the preschool setting, at a school, wherever. Um, it's data-driven, whereas a lot of the other developmental approaches are not. So they look at the child's skills and make sure they're acquiring skills and use that to decide when to move on. It's comprehensive. It doesn't just look at social, or it doesn't just look at play. It looks at social, play, academics, talking, um, imitation, like any of the skills that you would want a younger child to learn. And they also have decision trees. So what this is in the book, they have a section where if your child's not talking, you can look at it and it'll say, if your child's not talking, can they do this? And if they can, then you should do this. But if they can't, then you should do this. And not only do they have them in there, they've actually studied them to prove that they work <laughs> instead of just coming up with random ideas. So for 96% of the kids that they used them with, the children made more progress when following that decision tree than without following that decision tree. They also say that they're different from ABA, but I have that in quotes, and I put it like twins because really it's different in name only. For any good behavior analyst who's really on top of the research regard relating to how people learn, a lot of these things are the same. The first one is they say they include the research on development, a lot of the things they have in there is new for me from a developmental perspective, but the concepts we're still studying and talking about, it's just different names. And then the focus on relationships, good behavior analysts are gonna be focusing on that as well. And then the language development, they, they say that they teach language differently than how behavior analysts do, but I think they just don't have a good concept of what how we work on language. We both do it the same way. They do recognize that their approach is behavioral. They have these CBAs that work on their staff. I'm not really sure like, why there's this disconnect there, but um, it's really not that different from ABA. Okay, so one of the things I really liked in the Early Start Denver model was imitation. How many of you have kids who have a really hard time imitating? Anybody? Yes, okay. So when I first started in the field, the way we would do imitation is sit a child down at the table and say, do this and then you know, make them clap their hands. How fun and exciting does that sound? Isn't that fun? Wouldn't you wanna do that? So that doesn't usually, I mean, with some kids that'll work pretty well, but those are the kids who are probably already imitating a little bit anyway. But with the kids who don't imitate, that's not gonna get you very far. And a lot of the times what ends up happening is do this, and then the kid goes, 
and waits for you to help them clap because they're used to you helping them clap. Um, so for this one, what they look at is how do typically developing children start to imitate? What happens? What does that process look like? Um, so the best way that they say to teach imitation is to have two sets of toys so that you can be modeling with one set and the child can have their own set. Capture the child's attention. So again, you're going to be like a clown, doing whatever you can to make the child's world more fun and exciting, but basing it off of their preferences. If you know your child doesn't like loud noises, you're not going to sit down and go whoosh and scare your child. But if you know your child really enjoys that, then that's probably something you'll do. So you have to look at not just what you think would be fun for the toy, but what would your child think is going to be fun with this toy. Um, do not use set instructions, so don't say, do this. Uh, the reason for this is really important. If you're teaching a child how to imitate, what are you trying to get them to do? Imitate. If, right, imitate what you're doing. Are you trying to get them to listen to your voice and follow a command? No, you're trying to get them to watch you and do what you're doing. So if you pair an instruction with that, and they only learn to respond when they hear, do this, then chances are, for some kids, they're not going to ever imitate unless somebody is standing up there saying, do this, do this, do this. So if you don't have that instruction in there and get them dependent on that, you're really teaching them the skill of imitation. And then the last part is that they equate imitation to early conversation. It teaches that back and forth. People can do the same thing I do. When I do this, she does that. And it starts to help build that relationship for them. So the steps for imitation that they recommend doing, and again, these are all things that I came up with myself as well, but after like 10 years, it would have been nice to see this from the beginning. Um, first would be to continue after an adult model. And I'm going to go into more detail on these. So once... Once they're able to continue doing something after you model it, then you would start doing familiar actions, and then novel actions, a series of actions, and then pretend play, basically. So, for the continuing after adult model, what this means is you look at what the child's already doing. If the child's already banging on a drum, you bang on a drum. And if they'll still keep banging on it after you do that, that's good. Some children might stop. Some might not keep doing it. So it's really important that they're at least able to do that first before you try to move on to a harder skill. Um, of course, it has to be fun and exciting, and you want it to be something easy that they already like to do. If you're not using two items, you would take the item and do it and quickly hand it back to them and say, like, your turn, or you do, or you can just hand it back to them and see what they do. Um, after you've done the imitation, if they don't right away start imitating you, you can help them imitate you but that doesn't count as them imitating you, right? You have to wait until they can do it by themselves. And their rule is, until the child can do this with eight to 10 different items or actions, you don't move on to the next step. They have to be able to do this first. This is a video of that. Boom, boom. So we're kind of going back and forth. I'm imitating him a little bit, he's imitating me a little bit. Next 